Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all doing well and continuing to stay safe. This is a requested run by the Perry God himself, King DKC, who you can follow on Twitch. He wanted me to basically try out the Spartan Sandals with the Barrel, with the idea being that Spartan Sandals will give you space and the Barrel Launcher will, well, be a Barrel Launcher and launch some stuff into the opponents. But what I found was something much more interesting, in which the Barrel Launcher actually ended up being a really cool companion for the Spartan Sandals, because they both love the wall. Barrel Launcher likes getting crits off the wall, and Spartan Sandals likes pinning up enemies against the wall. So there's a lot to cover in this run, and I hope you all enjoy the content. But for those of you who aren't subscribed, I like to do a lot of Dead Cells 5BC runs, post commentaries like this one, and live commentaries. I do a ton of guides, and I actually have a Dead Cells podcast called Chaos and Chill, in which we just discuss the game of Dead Cells. So if any of that interests you, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications, and let's get started. So we start off in the prisoner quarters and what we're really trying to do is get a sense as to what we want this build to be. Because I've never done this before. I've never had a Spartan Sandals barrel run before. So this is entirely new territory to me. Like do I want to use the Spartan Sandals as the main weapon? Do I want to use the barrel as the main weapon? Is Spartan Sandals going to run more utility? And I don't know the answer to any of those questions. And so we use prisoner quarters as the way to essentially figure that out. Because the only enemy that really does any significant damage is the Oven Knights. And so once we figure that out, now we can head on down to the Toxic Sewers. Get some quick kills off. And now I'm starting to realize that, yeah, like what we need to essentially do here is use the Spartan Sandals to create space when we need to and use the barrel as our main attacking source. So in this case, Spartan Sandals serves as an important utility function, except against the leads when we can just knock them out because Spartan Sandals just pins them up and it's always nice to have. And so now what we're going to do is essentially we're going to test the waters a little bit, right? So we've got all these enemies kind of flying at us. We're going to deal with this mob pretty nicely, I gotta say. And we're going to hit this rampager with the barrel, get the magnetic grenade going on. N don't have to deal with any of the worms from the purulent zombie. And then, you know, get another kill off. Now we've got this disgusting worm, but he's shielded. But then I'm able to break it with the barrel because the barrel's explosion is large enough in such a small space to be able to clear that out completely. Now we're cursed and in the corrupted prison, which is, in my opinion, the hardest curse in the game because of the fact that you don't have a lot in your stat. At this point, I didn't have a lot. I was really hemorrhaging on damage and I had to kind of maneuver my way around and just kind of manipulate enemies because these toxic miasma can be such a pain to deal with on curses. But the good news is that the barrel has a pretty good range and you can kind of bank it off walls do some different sorts of hook shots it, just think of it like basketball you're essentially playing basketball with this weapon and once you're doing that once you kind of realize that, okay okay like this is what i need to be doing now what you essentially have is a blueprint for success with this and so you can hit different trick shots off of different walls and be able to utilize it in various ways as you can see me getting the kill off with uh, triple spartan sandals and this was weird. I don't know what happened to the Weirded Warrior, but I will take that kill any day of the week. But now we've got this Elite Slammer, and it's kind of the same thing, right? Just a little bit of a trick shot. Slammer's not going to attack because of the horizontal laser, and we're set. And I go to the Ramparts for the first time in 2.0. I think the first time since 1.9 beta, possibly. So it's been a while since I've been here. Not a lot of scrolls here, not a lot of scroll fragments, so I typically don't come here, but... I decided to just change it up a little bit, and we're just mauling enemies right now, keep in mind, and you guys can't see this because you don't see the full run, I have not gotten hit since a very innocuous hit in, pr in Prisoner Quarters, so I, I have gotten so far with this build, and what I'm doing as far as mutations are concerned, as you can see me get another bang shot off, is essentially... I want to get this open wounds for the bleeding because my barrel does bleeding damage. I have melee for the slowdown damage and because it just gives me a little bit more time to fire off the barrel because there is a little bit of a launch time with it. And then combo is always because combo is one of the best mutations in the game right now. That 20 something percent is absolutely amazing on this 
Um, especially with Brutality, because Brutality is so fast. And again, the thing about the barrel that you gotta remember is, and I'll talk about this in a future guide when 2.0 comes out, but you really gotta know how far you're gonna be firing, because the distance is not as far as you would think, but it's also not as short as you would think. And I know that sounds a little bit paradoxical, but right here, for example, I'm able to get a pretty long time on that barrel. But at the same time, I also don't trust it at, you know, sometimes. And I think it's important to realize, okay, if it's not going to go a certain distance, what is the appropriate distance to be able to launch this weapon? And that's what I use this concierge fight for, because uh, right before we hit beta, they had actually changed concierge so that the aura does not deflect the barrel, but his strikes still do, so kind of make a mistake there, but luckily I'm able to avoid it and avoid that trap damage, because when barrels hit you, they are traps. And yeah, and it's just one of those things, like, you've got to be kind of cognizant of how you want to approach a barrel run. Because it's a tricky weapon. It's not the easiest thing in the world. There is a learning curve. Like, you can't just bank it off walls and then expect to be able to kill every single enemy in the game. Because there are times when an enemy is going to attack when you're mid-attack. This is not a survival weapon, so your, your attack will get interrupted. And you're going to get hit not only by the enemy attack, but also by your own barrel. And that's never fun. So now what I'm just trying to do, again, just testing the waters, see how long I can extend this range out for. Turns out the answer is fairly long, and I'm going to use this to my advantage. And now we're approaching kind of the harder levels in the game as Concierge actually is able to deflect it back, but no harm, no foul on that one. And I'm going to use this to my advantage, essentially just to scope out different mobs, scope out different enemies. That's one thing that the barrel does really well that people don't realize, is that it's very good at assessing what mobs are out there. And yeah, it'll kill a lot of enemies in the mob, but it'll also tell you how many are in that mob and what you need to look out for. So that's something that I'm realizing and I'm thinking about during this fight as I figure out what exactly the optimal range for this weapon is. Now we take the Cursed Chest, we're in Slumbering Sanctuary. I'm kind of low on scrolls, so I do need to get a little bit more there. And so we get that curse, and then Slumbering Sanctuary offers more scrolls, offers more scroll fragments. And yeah, it's just kind of a better place to go to. And I'm just kind of spamming it right now. Again, just assessing what the mobs are. If they want to come aggro me, they can absolutely do that. I, you know, I'm in a safe spot right next to the shop. And that's really what the goal is, is just to figure out exactly what I need to do here. And this last raider kind of confuses me a little bit. He kind of has this delayed roll, and you can see that right there, and I'm a little unsure of what I want to do. So I just kind of take my time a little bit, and on curses, it's okay to take your time. I know I play super fast, but on curses, your playstyle kind of has to change. And I'm just kind of testing out different bank shots. Worst case scenario is that the Inquisitor will shoot at me and then I have to just avoid it. No biggie. And this last kill is going to be this, uh, uh, this, what is, what's the enemy name? The Caster. I always forget this enemy name, funny enough, but I am just kind of cheese on the ladder for a little bit. And again, just more testing out with the waters, with the barrel, but I actually missed the Kamikaze. Luckily, on the Ricochet, I'm able to get it back. And there are so many kamikaze bots in a certain section in slumbering sanctuary it can be scary like there will be like 12 in a row and if one hits you then the rest are hitting you and then you're dead and then it's all bad so and yeah so now we've got golems to deal with and i know i don't have the power to take on him head on so i gotta use all the skills that i can somehow avoid all the demon shots i don't know how i did it i, I was saying it as i was playing i was like how the hell did i avoid that but turns out i did Again, just aggro the golem I, and it's fine to aggro the golem sometimes like yeah because what's gonna happen right you go to a different ledge he calls you back you can reset and then gain your momentum in a different way it's, it's fine to do that it's not that big of a deal but uh you're gonna see me for all the good playing i do i do some dumb stuff sometimes and not, you know me falling into spikes that happens and we move on to sepulcher we get the curse going on and it appears at the beginning of the level which is both good and bad right it's good because we obviously don't have to deal with the fact that we may run out of enemies, but it's bad because, you know, what if there's a spike trap right at the beginning? Sepulchre loves to do that. What if there's an, a suboptimal mob? I remember there was like a mob of like eight enemies and then they all just came converging towards me and then I died on a curse from that. I almost died to the corpulent zombie right there because of the fact that he 
now I believe he slams between platforms. Maybe he's always been able to do it. I don't go to Sepulchre much anymore because of the low scroll fragment count, but you know, in times like this, it's like I really need to come here more and <laughs> to hone my craft because this is not one of my stronger levels. And now I'm just trying to figure out what I'm what I want to do here because this failed this not the failed experiment, but the Inquisitor almost kills me right here because I stop paying attention. And that's kind of the danger with the weapon that can hit you, is that if you stop paying attention, then you're going to pay dearly for it. So I do get lucky in that situation. I'm able to avoid it. Um, I, what I should have done was actually just use the Spartan Sandals because I should have bull rushed a little bit. I had a fire grenade. There was no reason for me to keep trying to use the barrel. Should have used my fire grenade. Made my life a lot easier. And I do that right there and I clear the curse instead of trying to use the barrel once again. So. Again, you don't always have to be trying to fire off and get those crits with the barrel. You have skills, you have other weapons, just use them, you know? Or if you have a shield, you can use it. Like, you don't always have to use the barrel. And that's something that I see a lot of newer players doing right now because it's like that shiny new toy and that's all they want to use. But it's not the efficient way to use it. And anyways, rambling aside, we now hit that four cell door. And this was kind of interesting because I hadn't really used the Spartan Sandals as a damage thing for a while, but in Sepulchre, I kind of was forced to because I got a couple double elites and you know with those double elites Spartan Sandals just pins them up against the wall so it's really convenient and you know they deal with mob it deals with like very clustered mobs well like you saw with the two dart trackers and the knife thrower and even here yeah it, it deals well in small spaces and I, that's one of its big of it that's one of its biggest strengths I decided just to cheese up on the ladder and because I know the Corpulent Zombie isn't going to come down and attack me, but just to play it safe, I kind of move around, make sure it doesn't hit me, get the kills off from there, just fire off my barrel. Now is an okay time to spam it because of the fact that, yeah, there's a lot of kamikazes around and there's a huge range of explosion with the barrel. And that's something you got to keep in mind is, yeah, it, it's a very, very large explosion. Use that to your advantage. Nothing wrong with doing that. Um, and so now we're gonna hit the giant and this is gonna be a pretty long battle So I do speed it up around the quarter way mark because it's more or less just the same thing because I have two weapons that are not great against it because the barrel kind of does rely on synergy a little bit in order to be able to get damage off on giant because of the fact that you're not really getting much in the way of being able to get those crits it's almost impossible actually to get those crits there's probably a way to do it I've not figured that out here. You can probably get to the wall on the left or right side and figure it out from there, but for me, I, that just seems like way too much trouble for something I don't really want to do. So, anyways, and yeah, now you can see like the footage is starting to speed up a little bit because again, it's just the same thing over and over again. Kick with the Spartan sandals on the eye and then use the barrel. Hope that I do some significant damage and then every now and then I kind of mess up a little bit. And so, yeah, I'm just trying to do different things and what I need to watch out for is basically to make sure that the eyes do not charge to four because now with giant it he actually only loses one charge instead of losing all of his charges when the hand goes down so you got to be really careful of that and yeah it, it can be difficult sometimes and here i do get hit because of the falling crystals and you know, it's not that bit it's not that big of a deal it's trap damage you know it's about 20 percent not the worst thing in the world you know ideally we'd like to get a no hit but you know, sometimes we don't live in a perfect world. I think that's the first time I had gotten hit by Giant in a while, so... Points off on that build for that, but... It's really... You know, if I was using, like, a Carbine or something with this, it would have gone by a lot quicker, but... You know, Spartan Sandals, it, it works in a lot of other situations. I can I can forgive it easily for this one. Not a big not a big deal at all. But, yeah, you know, we're coming up on the end of this fight, and I, the footage is gonna go come back to normal speed at some point. And, you know, just... Same thing, just keep firing off things and the other thing I forgot to mention is that my two turrets are the flame turret and the cleaver and now what they're both doing is essentially giving me toxic clouds and then I'm just trying to you know get as much synergy as I can on this build because that can be a little bit difficult to achieve but we do get the kill off on the giant only take the one hits no biggie and we do end up in disterily I'm not a big fan of this level to be honest I do find it a little bit boring just because of the fact that there's like no teleporters and there's a lot of empty space with walking so it was kind of tough to find good footage. I have the same prob problem with Hypey Castle, but Hypey Castle occasionally has some fun areas to deal with, but I'm not the biggest fan of this biome. Uh, I know some people like it. You know, we're all entitled to our own opinions. I respect yours. 
and I would hope that you respect my opinion on it, but not my favorite biome. Kind of feel the same way as I do Ossuary, but what I do like in Disturly is the enemy diversity. I think that's really cool. They have many, many different types of enemies. I do like the new additions, and you can see right up above, they have a lot of new barrel traps. I think that's really cool. I think that's unique. That's something that no other level has, and I think that's something that distillery you know i don't like it but it does stand out it is a very unique level i think um that's one of the beauties of dead cells right is that there's so many things for so many people i'm not gonna like everything and you know you're not gonna like everything but there's something for everybody and that's why i really enjoy it um anyways hand of the king time not much happened in distillery i did get the 60 i took one hit not a big deep not a big deal um we're just gonna keep on you know just firing off the barrel whenever we can we do get a crit chance at some point after the three strike combo it's hard to get crits against hand of the king because lately and i've noticed this since 1.8 but he likes to stay on the corner more often i don't know why that is i don't know if there was some kind of change with hand of the king that they didn't tell us about but he definitely stays up on the corner a little bit and so that's actually led me to getting hit a lot more than i used to and yeah i mean it can be a pain but you just got to be careful but I almost actually get hit by the down slam, but I'm able to make it to the teleporter in time. And he goes for the double dash, get the kill off, and then we are moving on to the Astrolab, which again is not a very eventful level. A couple highlights here and there, but you know, overall it's kind of a, it's a last biome. You're really thinking about the end boss here, and occasionally you're thinking about librarians, but once you do this level enough it's not that big of a deal and you can see like this is the only highlight that i'm going to show from the level and that's just because i really like how i deal with these slammers drop both of my turrets and then just fire against the wall get the crit and kill both of them at the same time it's it can be a very efficient weapon when you figure out how to use it and that's one of the reasons i do like it i hated it at first but i did figure out what was a good way to use it and so now I'm, I'm being a little bit cautious against Collector because his first phase is usually when I get hit because I, I tend to get hit a lot by his stab move because of the fact that he just kind of goes wild with it and it's so unpredictable at times. And yeah, and I just keep firing off the barrel, get him up to one heal, which is perfectly normal for a brutality run. And I'll get another heal typically during this phase, which I do. And then... In the next phase, I'll get the third heal, and then that will approach the end of the fight. So, collector battle is typically not that bad. Uh, sometimes things can go devastatingly wrong, but I do have a lot of health on the build. I have Soldier's Resistance for that reason. Uh, the other reason I have Soldier's Resistance is because for the collector fight, I actually forgot to re-roll my mutations because I was just kind of in my own zone, and sometimes that happens. I do tend to forget mutations. It, it, it is what it is, but we have him on three heals, and we're just going to keep firing off spamming crits, and then he's going to go back up, and then we are just going to drop both of our turrets, and then let him do his thing. We are going to get hit here, just very, very slightly, no big deal, and he is going to heal in just a little bit of time after he's done with these fireballs, and yeah, I mean, honestly, the thing about this fight, what you got to keep in mind is that sometimes you gotta just be a little bit patient and then when you get that opportunity just go for the kill and i and that's what i was able to do here as we get that final kill we did get hit once by a stab move but you know again we have so much health on there it wasn't that big of a deal um a couple notes from this run and the first thing was that i could have gone to conjunctivity as the result probably would have been around the same i have gone to conjunctivity in the past with the barrel i have gotten a no hit with against her She's not that bad of a boss with barrel. You just got to manipulate movement a little bit more. And against the tentacles, it's really not a big deal. The biggest thing for barrel that you got to keep in mind is it really relies on synergy. Because a lot of the time, you're not going to be able to get those crits. And if you over rely on crits, then you leave yourself vulnerable to getting hit. So you got to keep that in mind with this weapon is that it's high risk, high reward. And it's a very chaotic type of weapon. But you also got to remember that it's not the most powerful thing in the world on its own it, it has a good aoe spread but it does kind of need that 60 percent to bleed or 40 percent to electricity or 100 percent to burning oil like it needs something to go along with it and the spartan sandals does serve that utility with that open wound and with kind of creating that space so yeah i mean would i say this is a weapon for everybody no of course not i i, I think this is one of those weapons where you know some people are just going to flat out hate it a lot of people are going to love it for me i'm kind of somewhere in the middle 
to be honest. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. I'm just kind of, okay, like I can understand its strengths. I understand why people like it, but it is not for everybody. It is a slower type of weapon. It does require careful attention to. So if I ever do this guide on the barrel launcher in the future, I'm going to really hit on that point of being careful and being very deliberate with it. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to check my stuff out. Leave a like and subscribe for more Dead Cells content, and I'll see you all later. Have a great night, everybody, and stay safe out there.